Craig Robinson, where in the fuck have you been? have you been? Robinson, where in the fuck have you been? have you been? Robinson, where in the fuck have you been? Craig Robinson, where in the fuck have you been? appreciate a bunch of you who have been following my Instagram and my Robinson DP fan page uh, and sending me occasional messages, making sure that I'm all right, and like, what's going on, we miss you, type of thing. Um, wow, uh, it's been probably, what, a full year or so since I posted a video, and uh, I feel like at least, it, whether I, where I go from here really doesn't matter, but at least I kind of catch everybody up as to what's going on. Please, could you make up your mind, darling? <laughs> like, anyway, um, where I left off was kind of into my uh, reverse diet post-show after my pro season in 2014. Um, and I had a lot of things going on. And I, you know, I was forcing myself um, to like constantly try to create content. And it, it just became over, too overwhelming for me. Um, I, you know, listen, I can make excuses and say that I didn't have time. I could have made videos. I just wasn't in the mood for the longest time to do them. Um, if you look back through my videos, probably towards, I believe, either the end of my contest prep or slightly after my contest prep, I was telling everybody that I just felt blah, shot, um, unmotivated. Um, just like down in the dumps, not interested in a lot of things. Uh, and there was a lot of reasons for that. Um, you know, I know a lot of you guys and girls out there, you worship the bodybuilders and the fitness people. Um, and you don't understand what goes into doing a show. Okay, yeah, I was shredded. I looked obscene. I looked ridiculous. Um, I came in really, really good conditioning. But physically and mentally, it takes its toll. It's not the healthiest thing in the world. And, you know, people ask me all the time, why don't you compete more often? I mean, you, you'd kill it. No, I wouldn't. Actually, I'd end up probably destroying myself first. Um, and I couldn't progress if I was constantly in contest prep. That's why I always tell people, take a longer time from show to show. I tend to take two to three years before I come back back again. Um, I need my body to heal. I need to get my, ment my myself mentally back into 
uh, my life and things that I want to get done. And it allows me to add more muscle in a healthy way. Um, so for those of you who might be seeing this video for the first time, I had to have dieted for, it was over 40 weeks to do two shows. I did an OCB show in August where I did make it to the overall, um, I, I, like I won my class, I just did not win the overall, I was, I was that close. I uh, just gave away a little too much size even though my conditioning was on point. And then I did my um, pro debut in September for the AMBF where I came in second. So I had started dieting in November of 2013, okay? to do a show, one show in August of 2014, and then another show like four weeks later in September of 2014. During that time, not only was I in contest prep, I had gone through selling my townhouse um, and living in a temporary housing situation where I was living with my in-law, my mother-in-law, um, while we were in the process of having a house built, which I'm currently sitting in, by the way. So that did come to fruition. Um, and I'll get there eventually I'll explain to you what was going on. So I finished my contest prep. I started my reverse diet. And if you follow my Instagram, you see that even with me not doing these videos, I never fell off. I still did what I had to do. But I just needed a very long time for my batteries to kind of recharge, uh, find some motivation, find some direction, kind of like get myself moving. Um, and during while I was doing all this, a whole bunch of other stuff uh, personally occurred. Um, once again, never threw me off of training, never threw me off of my, my nutrition, but it just, I was so mentally just wrapped up in other negative stuff and, and things that just needed to be sorted out that I just didn't feel like making videos. I had no passion to do it, want, uh, or need to create any sort of video. Um, and I kind of did miss interacting with a lot of the community, but I just didn't have it in me. Um, I didn't stop making videos because of the haters. I didn't stop making videos because I wasn't really making any money because I was never in it for the money to begin with. Um, I wasn't looking to create a clothing line, business line, brand, or anything else off of this YouTube channel except for the fact of showing you what my journey was. Um, and I still stand by that because if I wasn't, I would have still been doing videos for over the past year and I didn't. So let me get to you, like, start telling you what was going on. So I finished my contest prep and I was just mentally shot. Okay, I was just, I was tacked. I was just, it, it, I was so lean for so long. Um, I was just physically and mentally burned out from the whole process of competing. Um, so I started my reverse diet, and while I was doing my reverse diet, there were some things going on. So, like I said, I, I sold my house, and if you saw some of the videos, I was living somewhere else temporarily. So, I didn't have a lot of personal space, time to shoot videos. You know, there's constant like interference, it was just annoying. I didn't, you know, like I was getting home from work late. I didn't want to shoot videos in the dark, so all that kind of stuff. Um, but, God, I, I hate talking about personal stuff on camera. Um, my wife brought something, brought attention to me, something, you know, and obviously I'm still married, so it has nothing to do with divorce or anything like that. Um, my wife found a lump uh, in her in her breast, and. Uh, it was like a weird thing. So I don't take these kind of things lightly. So we went immediately to go, you know, kind of figure out what was going on. She was very proactive about it. Um, and we went to go get this ultrasound done and they found this lump. <clears throat> so with that being said, you know, you, you start going through the panic of what is this? Is it, is it something minor like a cyst? Or is it you know, breast cancer, you know, all, all these type of things. And it just mentally starts wearing on you. Now, this is all happening while I'm shooting video with you guys, acting like everything is fine. While I'm coming out of my reverse diet, um, you know, trying to get my training and get my head straight. I, I have, you know, my wife and I are dealing with this. So we go get the ultrasound done. They identify that there's a small little, like, bump of tissue. They, you know, so the guy comes out. Um, the technician or whatever you want to call him and he says oh don't worry about it it's what they call fibroadenoma it's just a bunch of um like knotty tissue and i think you're not a doctor or a specialist in this so for me i think it was very um unprofessional for him to say that I and mean, he was just trying to calm us down or get us out of the, the worst case scenario type of thing but just kind of like brushed it off 
And I want to thank the female technician who was in the room, looked directly at my wife and said, listen, regardless of what he thinks, you should go visit a specialist just to check. So, I feel better because he told me it's this fibroadenoma thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. No big deal. It's, it's just um, like, a, like a cyst. It's nothing. So worst case scenario, they'll just you know remove it if that if if it's if there's a need to remove it, but it's not cancer. So my wife being very proactive, and I give her all the credit. She had a lot of strength. I mean, she's a health nut. You know, she takes very good care of herself. So this is a very scary thing. And, and ladies, no matter what your you know people tell you, always follow up with your specialist. Be proactive. You know, even sometimes these doctors are very like nonchalant. Make sure that you're satisfied with everything before you brush this kind of stuff off. So. Um, she finds this very good breast specialist. We go to him, and he is very proactive. You know, he does his exam. Um, he do, we have the ultrasound thing, and he says, "Listen, from the looks of it, the feels of it, everything else, yes, it is a fibroadenoma. However, just to be safe, because I, I don't like to brush anything off, my wife, you know, my wife is in her thirties. Um, I just want to double check. He goes, if you're eighteen or you know twenty, I, I probably would just say glance it over and say move on. So we we schedule the biopsy." Um, gets done. Thankfully, everything comes back negative. It is deed effect of fibroadenoma, and now she just has to go back every so often um, just to get another ultrasound done to see if it's you know if it's you know growing or shrinking or anything else just to check because if it continues to grow, he would eventually recommend to um, have it removed just because it'll be very uncomfortable that's constantly there. So that was going on for like several months where we were going back and forth between ultrasounds and you know going to the doctor and then getting the biopsy done and all that kind of stuff. Okay, great. We're good. Awesome. Um, you know, thankfully, I love my wife. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know what I'd do without her. And uh, you know, that was just that was just a scary moment. Um, and it took it took its toll on me. I mean, I, I acted cool. I did the husbandly thing. You know, everything's gonna be cool, great, grand, wonderful. Uh, don't worry about it. Showing those signs of strength. Um, and thankfully. <laughs> It's just me, Reese. Um, everything turned out okay, but you know, those seeds of doubt are in your head, man. And you're, and you're sitting there like tossing and you're turning and you're just hoping everything's gonna turn out all right. Um, you know, because we're in the middle of doing like all this stuff. You know, like we're, we have our, our, our life ahead of us. Um, you know, we're, we're buying a house, we're doing all this great stuff. So um, thankfully that all turned out okay. Now, meanwhile, as, as, as we're dealing with that, we're dealing with some contractual issues with the house, getting things corrected that the builder was screwing up, um, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we just had a lot of things going on. So, you know, I got every weekend was wrapped up with the house, the house, the house, the house, the house. And then the few minutes that we had where we weren't wrapped up with that, you know, we were trying to just enjoy our time together, go places, do things, you know, just do husband and wife stuff that we usually don't get to do. Um, then came April, you know, we closed on the house. That was a whole nother nightmare. Um, the, the bank that was underwriting our mortgage was just a, a whole bunch of idiots. Um, they screwed everything pretty much up, even though I had all the paperwork in on time. Um, all, all the stuff was done. I, I literally had to like get into fights to get it to close. And we, we closed on like the 19th out, like the last possible second. My attorney did a great job getting all the paperwork together. So we could close on the house on time because I had my father coming up from Florida um, to help us with some, you know, I was going to replace some light fixtures and some other things. We were having some deliveries done. So I needed assistance, you know, moving some things around and, and getting some other stuff done. So we get through all that and then we spent months trying to get everything together in the house, you know, getting our furniture moved in, getting organized. Um, as you can see behind me, we had window treatments done. That was another nightmare. JC Penny absolutely sucks. Um, what, what they put us through to get some, you know, obviously the rep is an idiot and can't get that done. Um, you know, I had other work done in the house that you can't see on camera right now. Um, and it was just like contractor after contractor after contractor after contractor of getting that stuff done. Um, at my job, there was just a lot of projects. There was a lot of new things coming down the pike. There was just a lot of work. I was getting home late a lot. Um, on top of that, a lot of people have asked this question. Um, everyone's asking if I'm working with John anymore. And that answer is no. Uh, I know there's been a lot of friendship drama on YouTube. Um, 
between like Chris Jones and Vince, and then you know uh, Legends of Aesthetics with Ogus and uh, Lovato and, and a couple other things. Um, John and I had a falling out. It wasn't over money or business. Um, it was just something that I'd rather not talk about on camera, and I'm not going to. Um, so we're no longer working together. Uh, I am currently a free agent. I'm writing all of my own plans. I'm doing all of my own training. I control all of my own nutrition. Um, so that relationship has ended. Uh, will we ever be friends again? I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really put any thought into it. We've run into each other a few times at the gym. There really hasn't been any conversation. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, however, regardless of what our relationship is, John still does coaching. Uh, team Strength is Life is still in existence. Uh, I know he does a lot of power lifting and I think just general fitness. I don't know if he's, I don't believe he's working with bodybuilders anymore from my understanding. Um, so however, if you still want to find a coach, John is, I would still highly recommend him. He's very knowledgeable and he knows his stuff um, and he takes care of his clients. Um, since we're talking about coaching, I have, if you follow my Instagram, I have picked up several clients of my own. Um, not to compete with John, just, you know, I had some people that asked if I was willing to do it, and I am, um, and I've had some success. I did have um, my friend's wife compete in bikini. She did win her pro card, did very, very well for herself. Now she's in her off season, and I'm gonna keep her there for a while, because we wanna improve some things to, you know, so that when she comes back as a pro, she does very, very well. Um, I have uh, another lovely lady out in Ohio that I'm working with, um, who had a, a, a trainer, I guess, that was just trying to starve her into a show and do some other weird stuff. So I've been working with her for a while. She's having a lot of great results. Her, her goal now is to get to a 225 pound squat. In a matter of a couple months of working with me, we've already got her up to 200 pounds uh, on a squat. I think like a 200 pound, you know, 200 plus pound deadlift. And she's doing really, really well. Um, all this kind of other stuff is going on. So, you know, my wife with the, the breast issue, um, the friendship between John and I falling apart, um, dealing with the house, as you can see, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and then while we're kind of like getting settled and everything seems to be going great, grand and wonderful after we move into the house, um, I get a phone call from my mother um, in, while they're in Florida. Uh, my dad had just been helping me around the house and everything else, and then he was helping my sister move uh, and doing some other things. And uh, while he was helping my sister, um, he had gotten very short-winded, um, wasn't feeling well. Thankfully, didn't have a heart attack or anything like that, but we did get a stress test on him, and they found some blockages. And, um, you know, it, they were doing like a simple procedure just to do like, um, I forget what they call it, but I guess they go through like a catheterization through the groin, um, just to check out the blockages and they thought they were gonna um, just put a stint in or something like that. And uh, the, the, the doctor said, no problem, it's probably just gonna be a stint uh, and maybe some medication. And if we're really lucky, probably just some medication because the blockages didn't look that severe. So I get a call in June on like, like the day before it's supposed to happen. I, I didn't know any of this was going on. Um, I get a, you know, I get the text message at like 7.30 or 8 o'clock, something like that, that he's going in for the procedure, he'll be out soon. I get a call like an hour later from my mom who was hysterical on the phone crying. And I thought maybe, you know, the worst case scenario happened, like he, he went into like cardiac arrest on the table and didn't make it or something. Um, I get a call that he needs to have emergency quadruple bypass surgery done. Uh, <laughs> it's, it hasn't, you know, it's one of those, uh, one of those years, I guess. Um, and meanwhile, I'm in like end of quarter work on the busiest day of that, of that time. Um, we're like, we're doing all this stuff on like a Friday and it's like, okay, uh, I gotta completely get myself focused, in line, uh, head on straight while, while I'm getting this news because th there's, there's nothing I can do because the set, they, they kept him in the hospital and the, the surgery wasn't gonna be scheduled till Monday. 
So I get this call, and I'm like, okay, what do I do? Do I, do I tell my boss I have to leave work right now and run? Or do I like, you know, try to finish the day out and try to catch a flight the next day or whatever the case may be? So I'm trying to keep my mother calm that he's going to be fine. Um, you know, there was no damage to his heart. He was in the best case scenario where they had a monitor. They can, you know, they can try to prevent anything from happening. Um, I was going to call for my sister who's, you know, obviously and, and understandably upset. And I'm like, okay, everybody calm down. You know, best case scenario, he didn't have a heart attack. There's no damage. He's in the hospital. They'll keep him there. The monitor may be fine. So I finish out the day. Um, and uh, I figure out a way to get like a flight down to Florida on Sunday because there was nothing really available. Um, but I was able to get out of the Atlantic City Airport on, uh, on that Sunday. And, you know, this is what I hate about airlines. <laughs> like nothing, they make everything so fucking complicated. Um, I get there on Sunday, I'm sitting at the gate, no problems, flights on time, all this kind of shit. Then all of a sudden, like five minutes before we're supposed to be getting on the flight, they're like, flight delayed. Okay, cool. Awesome. Fantastic. Like, just like what I want the day before my dad's surgery, right? So, like 10, probably like a minute after they announced the delay, they go, flight's canceled. I'm like, what the f- How the f- Like, how do you cancel a flight? Holy shit. Like... So I go up to the front desk and I'm telling the lady, I'm like, listen, you know, my dad is scheduled for like quadruple bypass surgery tomorrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you just can't cancel a flight on me and give me no other option. So she's like, listen, best I can do is I can get you another flight to like some, I forget the name of the town, like Fort something. It was like two hours south of where I needed to be. And I'm like, okay, when is it leave? She's like 20 minutes. I'm like, just get me on the plane. So, you know, thankfully I have carry-ons, I didn't, you know, I don't, uh, I was only planning on staying for a short time, so I didn't have to worry about, like, losing my luggage or anything like that. I run down to the other side of the airport, and I, I, I you know, I'm waiting on line for this. Now, meanwhile, my wife and my mother are scrambling to find a way to get me from the airport to the hospital, because I'm two hours away. My mom can't leave the hospital to come get me, so there's, like, there's nothing I can do, and, uh... <laughs> Thankfully, my wife has a cousin in Florida uh, who owns a limo business, and they, they pulled a great favor for coming to come get me at the airport and get me to the hospital. So, that Monday morning, I'm telling you, the scariest thing is that my father, I've always said, like, he's built like a tank. He's, you know, he's always taking pretty good care of himself. He's not severely overweight. His diet was never that bad. The only problem was he spent a lot of years traveling around and not getting enough sleep, and I think that's really just what did it to him, the, the toll of just not getting enough rest over time. Um, he was always traveling through time zones and you know, get, you know, getting a couple hours of sleep off of a plane and then going into the office in New York City and just that constant cycle for like over 30 years. Um, all, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I see my dad just sitting there like, shit. <laughs> and uh, I give him credit, man. He just, he kept... Such a uh, calm demeanor. I knew he was scared, but for the sake of my mom and my sister, just, he was good. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, as the anesthesia stuff hit him, you know, some of the emotions came out, and he was, uh, he was like, you know, it's not my time. I've got too much stuff to do. Um, I have to help you at your house. <laughs> I gotta mow your lawn. Not that I need him to do that, but you know, stuff like that. So, you know, it's uh, excuse me. Um, but you know what? It was uh, it was probably about he was in surgery for about uh, seven or eight hours, um, doing everything, and uh, surgery went smooth. Thankfully, the doctor did a great job. Um, and, uh, you know, he comes out and he's just attached to all these machines, um, tubes everywhere. Uh, man, <laughs> he, he looked like, you know, he was a cyborg or something, or like, you know, he was 
trying to be Iron Man with the amount of tubes they had in him between the drainage tubes and all this other stuff. Um, and I give the credit a lot, you know, a lot of for all the people that work at the hospital, man, they were on top of their, the, everything they said they were going to do, they did it. Um, they took care of him around the clock. He was never alone. You know, we were able to go in and out. Um, and it was just like, it, it was incredible seeing my dad, like, completely normal one day digging a hole with me, and, like, a couple weeks before, to that several weeks later. Um, you know, watching him, even with the pain medication and everything, just wincing in pain. And my dad is tough as they come, man. Um, you know, he, he couldn't talk because he had all these tubes in his mouth. All he could do was really blink. But every once in a while, he's like these jolts of pain where he just, you can see him just wince. Um, because they crack you from like here all the way down to like your belly button. Um, and thankfully, everything went all right. I mean, within a couple of days, it was like he never even had the surgery. He was, I mean, he, was, he still had some tubes and stuff for drainage issues and everything else, but, you know, he was talking, he was normal, and he, he looked okay. I mean, he still, had, he still had the pain, but they had to get him up and walking and moving right away. I mean, he must have gained like 20 or 30 pounds of fluid that, you know, slowly draining out and everything else. And then it was like six to eight weeks even after of just, you know, recovery and, and trying to get back to normal. And now if you look at him, you never know he had the surgery. Um, you know, completely normal playing golf, doing his thing, following whatever his doctors tell him to do with diet wise or medication, um, all that kind of stuff. You know, so it was just like all that stuff wrapped into me trying to create YouTube videos. It wasn't, uh, wasn't a priority <laughs> as you can obviously tell. Um, good news is now <laughs> everybody, um, is okay. Um, and we even had a little scare here with uh, little Miss Reese. Um, we came home from my mother-in-law's house one day and uh, she starts acting really, really weird. And uh, she had a seizure, which we had never seen before. Um, I'm not really familiar with dog seizures, to be honest. Um, so it scared the living shit out of me and my wife. And uh, we took her to the emergency vet to find out what was going on, to find out that dogs and to have seizures, it's pretty common. Um, uh, nothing really abnormal. Thankfully, it was only a short one. It wasn't a big one. Um, they didn't need to put her on any medication or anything, and we just have to keep watch over her. But um, she hasn't, as far as we've seen, hasn't had any more. Hopefully, she never will. Um, it may have just been a random thing. Um, and uh, that's really about it, guys. I mean... My training has gone well. Uh, I'm hanging around well over a year bulk. Um, you know, I'm at 195 pounds, 194, 195 pounds, give or take, on any given day. So from 174 to 195, it's like 24 pounds over the course of over a year. It's not a lot. I've stayed really lean. Uh, I've been fortunate enough that I ran into this guy that I've, I've made friends with in the city, and we train to get together every day, which is kind of. Uh, Helped me out in the gym and revitalized me lifting. Um, wow. And, uh, you know, th there's a lot more things to come uh, down the line. I, I just got really tired of, you know, carrying a tripod in, trying to get my workouts done, film stuff. It just became too uh, taxing. I had too many things going on mentally and physically, uh, you know, as I revealed in the video. Um, so... I think I'm going to come back. How regularly, I don't know. But I want to tell you guys that I'm okay. Um, I, like I said, there was just a lot, of, as you saw in the video, I just had a lot of things to deal with that were far more important um, than you know, having some fun or taking pot shots or somebody or talking about fitness. Um, so, guys, I, I hope you don't mind. I, hope, I, you know, I kind of laid my heart out here. Um, but there'll be more to come and uh, for all you guys and girls who are, who are reaching out to me both my clients and you know a couple people through YouTube and Instagram uh, I appreciate the fact that you said you missed me that you missed the videos um, some of you guys found inspiration from me um, it meant a lot um, you didn't know what was going on but those those little comments every now and again kind of kept me fired up to keep moving keep pushing forward um, and, and getting it done alright guys I'll talk to you soon.